Hello everyone, and happy Halloween. Um, I I'm recording this quite quick because I was not expecting this, but we got a sudden surprise Undertow Doubt's Rune Halloween newsletter. And it's, uh, it's also a newsletter coming out on, uh, of course, it's uh, Doubt's Rune's fifth anniversary. So, uh, which is kind of crazy. But yeah, was not expecting this newsletter. And as you can see out of nowhere, Toby just like suddenly tweeted out, there was no build up to this. Toby just suddenly tweeted out, it's Halloween, but I hope you didn't see a small letter that looks like a news in your mail. I got Ghost Toby here. You guys are going to be getting this a bit late. It's not going to be Halloween, but uh, right now I'm recording this in a freaking Gastler costume before heading out to a Halloween party. Because, I, again, I was not expecting this. I'm, like, recording this when I have the time. I've got to upload <laughs> got to edit and upload this by Friday. But, yeah, kind of crazy. Just dropped this on us. It is a bit of a shorter newsletter. I've looked into it. So we're not going to spend too much time on it. Also because I don't have that much time to spend. But, yeah, let's, let's look into it. Undertale Doctrine Newsletter, Halloween 2023. What's this? What's this? There's magic in the air. <laughs> uh, today, many go good children go around their neighborhood to gather gifts and sweets. Okay, so we're so we got this like we got the traditional Undertale narration style, except this text isn't the Undertale font, nor is it the font that the newsletter normally uses. I know that's I know that's a weird nitpick. Or something to point out, but it, it is a different font for some reason. You, however, have grown tired of the familiar faces and familiar candies. Filled with the desire for something new, you strike out to the ha strange house on the hill. The one no one, no other dares approach. You reach the door. Trick or treat. And it's got the, it's got the little, uh, uh, freaking, like, man, that's old. That's from, like, old point-and-click games. The little, uh, greater than symbol. To denote your action that's <laughs> wow a white paw extends out of the mail slat slat slot is slat the right word to use there because slat would also work but i don't know if slat works um huh instead of candy you were given some kind of letter it seems to be addressed to the advertisement and of course this is gonna depending on who you are um it's gonna have your name which by the way is a good enough time as any to say that you can get this newsletter yourself if you just go to the undertale uh, website, go into here, click which tier you want, name, email, your favorite food, and you can then sign up for it. And so you can have your own name here. Well, not if you weren't already signed up to it, but in the future. This must be a mistake. This isn't edible at all. You figured you would end this adventure with a bag full of dinosaur egg oatmeal. Wow, I did... I mean, granted, Toby did just do a papyrus interview, but I was not expecting him to actually reference the dinosaur egg oatmeal from the very first papyrus interview. He, he did a really old one on Tumblr, where the only question asked was, uh, what is papyrus's favorite food, like 20 times, and Flowey finally answers dinosaur egg oatmeal. Um, but in a flight of anger, you threw the door open and... Ghost Toby. Ghost Toby dog, oh, uh, spooky. Something terrifying was standing in the doorway. From somewhere you heard a voice. Hey, the advertisement. The letter you're holding. It looks very much like a news, doesn't it? We only got papyrus art with him uh, in a Dracula costume, I guess. Just just really a pointy cape, which is cool. And then Sans is normal. Although it's smaller than normal. Yeah, so I guess that's also scary. So yeah, this newsletter is going to be a bit shorter. But there's a, cool, there's a few cool things in it, actually. Something very cool coming up right here. Don't you chapter 3 progress. We got Paris now just as Frankenstein and Sans is still normal. Chapter 3 is pretty much content complete. There will be essentially no more changes to the dialogue or gameplay from here. Hooray! Which is uh, kind of crazy, considering Toby was like talking about them still having to like patch up things only a month and a half ago with the last newsletter. So yeah. Uh, on my birthday, a friend came over to my house and played through the whole thing. It was very gratifying to see them laugh at all the stupid jokes we've labored over for years. It took a long time to get here, but now it feels like everything will be downhill. After they completed it, I asked, did anything seem incomplete? And they mentioned that the bullet seemed kind of hard. I nodded and forgot about this feedback immediately. Yes, yes, harder bullets. Give us harder gameplay, Toby. You've already you've already given us like some hints at it. Uh, with chapter two, I, I mean, Devil was already really hard. And Spamped and Neo was a bit easier, but then Snow Gray Spamped and Neo was even harder. And I mean, like, they're getting hard early on. And I'm very excited for harder challenges. Like, like Toby, Toby, all it, make us, make us play Toho. By the end, by chapter seven, just make us be playing Toho difficulty stuff. Now have, indoctrinate us all into playing Toho. Please, Toby. I want it, I want it to be hard. 
Uh, I nodded and forgot about this feedback immediately. Obviously, releasing a game takes many more steps than just finishing the gameplay and graphics. But people are already transitioning back into working on Chapter 4. Everyone is very excited to work on the next part. When we started Chapter 3, to be honest, it took a lot of trial and error to figure out how it would work, but with Chapter 4, I already feel very confident about how we can progress. And finally we got everyone, everyone dressed up as Sans. It's the Adam Sandsler gang. And then just all, just all turning and looking at Sans in contempt because he still hasn't changed. Also, I'm noticing, I believe Tammy made all the sprites. She makes all the art for the newsletters. I'm noticing the signature uh, pink pixels. Two, two in behind Papyrus' shoulders here on the second frame in between his legs. The, the signature empty pink pixels that Temi has forgotten to remove a couple of times. <laughs> and then here we go. Game release strategy. Oh, and then we got a uh, Chris. Just the, we, all, the, all the fun gang. All switching outfits. Susie's got the night fit going. Rousey, Rousey's gone goth. Punk as Susie. And then Chris, Chris and Comfy and Rousey's wear. Uh, so now that Chapter 3 is nearing completion, I think it's a good time to rediscuss how we will release Deltrune for purchase. Alright, here, here's the kicker. My original plan was to release Chapters 3, 4, and 5 together. However, the finish line of Chapter 5 is still pretty far off, and I don't think anybody really wants to wait that long to release anything. Especially me. So new strategy. No more waiting for Chapter 5. Instead, we're going to focus on putting Deltrune out for purchase once we finish Chapter 4. That should make everything a bit more reasonable. Chapter 4 already has a very substantial amount of cutscenes and enemy work done. Also, I've hired a new producer whose entire job it will be to speed up the overall game development for future chapters, so I feel very optimistic about the next steps of this project. That being said though, I think I'm going to pause on more detailed development updates for now. Instead, I'll just let you guys know if the development is getting close to completion or something funny happens. Well, some something a little funny and a little crazy did happen. <gasps> We're not getting chapter 5 with the next release, we're getting chapter 3 and 4, and at first that might be sad because we're only getting two chapters instead of three. But that means, considering they're, like, maybe about, like, halfway, three quarters way done with chapter 4, that's a 2024 release, right? Like, I've seen a quite a people, few, say, few people saying it, it isn't just me, but we're getting this in 2024, 100%. Which is kind of crazy. I mean, they even, I mean, Toby even got a new producer to kick him in the pants, get him everyone going, and organize stuff better. I mean, like, that's gonna be crazy. It is gonna be paid this time, because Toby only released Outro in Chapter 2 for free because of COVID. So it is gonna be paid this time. Which, I mean, I don't know. I'm, of course, I'm gonna pay it. Of course I am. I can't just not play Outro. But yeah, also, they, they definitely need, they definitely should get paid for it, the funds. Finally. So I guess updates are gonna slow down, which is fair considering they're in like the final stretch for the next update, really. Kinda crazy. Got more art. <laughs> Mew Mew dressed up as Undyne and Undyne dressed up as Mew Mew with an Alphys taking a photo in the corner. It, it, it really just looks like Tammy switched their sprites, which is kind of funny. Now all, the, all this- oh, here, here we go. Interview with the Chapter 2 development team, and then we got Torio dressed up in Frisk shirt and Frisk dressed up as Torio. With all these outfit swaps Temmie's making, she's just fueling the fandom to make fan art, which is great. I want to see some of this fan art. But alright, back to Halloween. Ready for a scary fact? Halloween is technically the fifth anniversary of Deltarune. I mean, I mentioned that earlier, but yeah, I was 13 when Deltarune Chapter 1 released, which... Which was really crazy, because being 13-year-old me, obsessed with Undertale already, it blew my mind. But, so yeah, it's been a while. That was scary, wasn't it? For this special day, I've interviewed some of the development team of Deltrune Chapter 2. Let's reminisce of, on some standard memories about developing the game. Let's read the interview. Alright. This one's gonna be most of the meat and the potatoes of the newsletter. We already got past the crazy, uh, they're only gonna be releasing Deltrune Chapter 3 and 4 together, uh, news. But now it's, now it's time for the interview. So, the interview of the Chapter 2 development team. The team introductions. We got Fred Wood, a game developer in San Antonio, Texas, joined early on in Chapter 2, mostly handles overworld stuff. And we got a, we got him as Newbert, which is great. We got a Jean, John, Canaeus, Canaeus, Canellus, Canaeus, I don't know. A developer of Souls-like platformers handles some of the, handles all of the battle stuff besides bullets and some bullets. Joined a few weeks after Fred. Okay, so they're both 
or early in Chapter 2's development. Taxidermy, also known as Juju, not Juju Adams, I don't know who that is, uh, handled bullets for Chapter 2, now does a variety of things. Okay, so they, they all joined in Chapter 2. Uh, Chess, a career streamer and hobby game dev who's been acting as a sort of Toby's Little Helper since late in Undertale's development. Ooh, she's been working uh, since Undertale. But yeah, I, I love the little icons. Fred is a uh, new root. John, Jean is a... Uh, Jean? It might just be Jean. Jean is a uh, Swatchling. Purple Swatchling. Taxidermy. Uh, I mean, Taxidermy is just Taxidermy. I think they've had this persona for a while. Then Chess as a uh, Icy with big glasses. And uh, you can check out all their socials through here. Want to check them out? Either if you got the newsletter. I might, I might link this interview down below, but if you want to check out their socials, Fred's a game developer. You can go sub to his YouTube channel. Yeah, I, I have actually played Love, which is kind of crazy. Um, got Gene Canellis. You can also check him out on like YouTube or Twitter. I saw on Twitter, I was checking this out earlier, but uh, Gene actually like like just announced that they're going to be doing a uh, Doutrune Dev Plays Undertale thing, which is why I'm subscribed to them. You should go subscribe to them as well if you want to hear all about that. And then we got Taxidermy on H.I.O. Of course, Taxidermy, if you don't know, uh, this was recently brought up because of the there was this huge Undertale Deltrune OC poll on Twitter. And the winner of that poll was Red. All the way from one of the first Undertale battles, like one that really defi helped define the genre, Undertale Red. Uh, yeah, she was made by Taxidermy, who is now on the Deltrune development team, which is kind of crazy. Yes, yeah, so you want to check them out on uh, HIO or Twitter. Then we got Video Chess, who um, I guess mainly uses Twitch. So if you like, if you want to see them stream, go check out their Twitch. But the team. Now let's actually read the interview. What was the first thing you worked on for Doutrune? Fred. Can I say the second thing? Because it was the Newbert room. On the second day of work, I put together the room where you meet Newbert for the first time. I had no context for who he was, but I knew I loved him. I'm so glad everyone loves Newbert now. Okay, so that's why Fred is Newbert. He's a he's number one Newbert fan. He created Newbert. And then we got Gene, the Giga Queen encounter, a true trial by fire. Yeah, holy crap. I spent my first two weeks programming and designing the boss with Toby, playing Super Punch Out and fighting people on the street for experience. Now, holy crap, the Giga Queen encounter. I mean, that's just a straight up custom punch out battle in doubt true that's crazy that that was your first thing to toby really just like when you you're on the development team now make me battle <laughs> uh and then we got taxi derby i joined the core team very early so i was actually working on a developing bullets before chapter 2's development started proper a few things i worked on haven't even been shown yet Ooh. and then chess the first thing i did for doubt Rune was i think it was the original dark road sprites for chris and susie in chapter one GG had already done the character design part, but the only sprites that existed at the same t at the time were Light World ones. Toby wanted me to make some base Dark World sprites for Temi to work from. And then these are the sprites. So cool. Uh, the the original Dark World versions of the sprites. So the, the Light World ones were, ma were the main ones, but Chess actually made the Dark World ones, which is cool. Uh, initial attempt, I tucked her hair into her vest for some reason. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't look good. That, that kind of looks like, a, like Susie's like a male shonen anime protagonist but then these are the closer ones at the final game i also can't help but notice chess everyone else had like proper grammar and capitalization and chess is just just, just didn't which is also funny because i'm pretty sure she's the oldest member here <laughs> and we got ooh, chris is the design as well so i made a couple dark road susies and a battle idol slash concept for dark road chris my way overdone slash concept i've seen this floating around as well which is I, it's cool to see uh, that this was a lot more animated and also the the uh, process behind it because you can see like the outlines are gone from most of the frames so I guess they got like the movement and anatomy down and then worked on detailing it which is really cool uh, it's been fun to see so many arbitrary decisions I made in these original sprites carried forth into the rest of the game as well as fan works etc i.e. the blue shading on Chris's mantle and their pink sword uh, yeah the blue shading on the mantle right here I didn't know this was a thing but apparently there's a debate on whether there's blue stripes on the mantle or not so the fact that it was just completely arbitrary shading makes this really funny uh, what was your favorite thing you worked on in chapter 2 one of my favorite bits was the work bits to work on in chapter 2 was all the vase shenanigans vases on wheels Susie kicking vases and especially the vase race I think making it to the end of the vase race without dropping it is one of the hardest and most satisfying things in the game. Designing and testing the layout of the room to feel just possible was a delightful balancing act of its own. So I have you to blame for the vase challenges. 
<laughs> uh, I I'm joking, really. The base challenges were fun. They were they weren't even like the hardest thing in Ch Dojin Joker 2, I don't think. They 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 didn't even compare to like uh, beating Spamton Neo, uh, Snowgrave Spamton Neo without shooting without shooting any bullets. Which, by the way, I did that like like almost a year ago now. I think I've I've have I've yet to edit the video, but I do want to do it sometime because that was a crazy challenge. Um, and also the, the car dodging. Yeah, that was a lot harder too. <laughs> and then we got Gene. There's so many, but my favorite might be making spam to Neo get angry if you use a certain cheat. Ah, so you are the day one patch person. You're the one. So, so first Toby like grabs you onto the team like, okay, you're on the team now. Make me this entire freaking custom battle. And you're like, okay. And then coming out of that, stumbling out of that, true, your trial by fire. You get out chap Dota in chapter two. People find the Spanton Neo glitch and Toby goes, you! <laughs> Fix Spanton Neo, and he's like, okay. Poor Toby's bullying Gene. Can we get some Gene support <laughs> in the comments? Uh, and then Taxi, we had Spamptons. Bracket text. Uh, uh, Spamptons. Press that one for Help! <laughs> This line of text was already in, but while discussing the battle, Toby remarked that we should probably make F1 do something. Oh, so to so they already had the text, but then Toby was like, we should do something with that. <laughs> I immediately had the little idea of a Spamton Sheriff that comes down and heals you and proposes it to Toby. I got the okay and then animated, coded, and implemented it all myself. I never expected it to be so popular. Oh, so wait, Taxiderby. Oh my god, Taxiderby was the creator of the little Spamton Angel. That's adorable. And also... I just just something I want to not, not saying not throwing any blame here, but I'm just saying this is proof in itself Not Toby's not the only one being creative here All of these guys have their own ideas that they're making taxidermy made the Spamton cherub They're all making these ideas as well and proposing them to Toby. So I'm just saying Toby's not the only genius give the rest of these guys some love They deserve it. Just saying. All right, moving on, and finally, Chess's answer: the banana, <laughs> the banana. No, not the banana. Oh, okay. It was almost the banana, though. My actual favorite thing. Well, I don't think I can say it flat out, but I had a hand in the return of of a real <laughs> original <laughs> in chapter two. <laughs> I, I okay. I'm not sure why you you're not able to just say the original Starwalker. That's is there Starwalker lore? I'm not sure. Yeah, I guess they had, uh, they made, helped make Starwalker. Cool. Any fun memories working with Toby? Fred, I got to learn a lot of things about game development and got a lot of insight from seeing how you work. It helped me become a much better programmer. My least favorite thing was when you decided that all of your quick design notes would be sent in the Joker Man font in bright, illegible colors. And Toby really is just out here torturing his employees with his, with his madness. If you hope your appears once, enemy can't pass. And they're in, they're in Spamton colors, too. <laughs> he made them in the Spamton colors. <laughs> okay, oh, but this is actually like an early design of one of the rooms in Chapter 2. The, this is like the first city room after the mouse puzzle, right? And like, if you go up there, I think you see Susie and Rossi? But that might be the room with the, like, the duplicate guys. But I mean, that's cool. Oh, I even didn't see the, didn't even see this down here, cones. No, it wasn't all of them, just some of them. For a while. Oh, poor Fred. Taxi. Uh, during our group playthrough of Chapter 2, Spamton Shop came up, and I mentioned I hadn't seen it yet. Toby exclaimed, YOU HAVEN'T?! And put everything on hold to show it to me right away. He was right to do so. To Toby, Toby, you're such a menace in, like, the best way. <laughs> I love this. This is- this is why, like, this is why the best characters, Jevil and Spamton, are gremlins, because Toby himself is a gremlin. Uh, chess. When Toby needs to explain the plot of a chapter to us, rather than having e us each skim a written plot summary, he'd basically act out a live radio drama of the entire chapter himself. He'd read all the dialogue aloud with character voices, play the appropriate music for each scene, the works, and even be prompted to make choices where appropriate. Truly the optimal way to experience the story of Deltrune. Truly, truly. To Toby... I mean, I mean, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's a writer. <laughs> Just, like, explaining everything. 
just just going off straight just entranced into the story oh man he, he truly is crazy he, he 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 figured out how to explain the story explain the the plot without it being boring that's crazy he, he, i mean i mean it's just testament to his passion really uh, and then I got Gene. Extra shout out to how fun it was to hear Toby read the chapter with the team. And that one time we discussed Toby's graph of what he thought the popularity of each character from chapter two would be over time. Wait, so Toby's predicting the popularity of the characters. I Toby's too self-aware. He was straight up going to be like, okay, who's going to be the Tumblr sexy man of Dojo in chapter two? I don't think he predicted it would be Spamton though. Because I think, I remember Toby mentioned around the Spamton sweepstakes time that, uh, he had no idea that Spamton was going to be as popular as he was. Like, like he personally loves Spamton, but he didn't think Spamton was going to be popular. So I guess he isn't the greatest at predicting it. Uh, and then for Taxi, can I change my answer to Toby reading the chapter? Okay, so just everyone loved Toby reading the chapter. Favorite character to make things for in the game? Gene. Spamton Neo. I specific specifically remember trying to balance Spamton Neo's people's attack forever. I would send videos to Toby for feedback, only to have to tweak it over and over again. Oh, I can relate to that. Forgetting when I was working on Celeste into the Jungle, if any of you remember that. Especially when I was making like the uh, promotional videos. I'd show it to uh, our team leader, the girl. He'd be like, okay, no, no, that's really cool. I love it. Uh, maybe tweak that. Okay, I tweak it. Uh, okay, that works. Uh, maybe tweak that. I tweak it. Uh, could you tweak that thing back? It, 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 went, it, go, it went on for like a week each time. <laughs> um, I worked so hard on that attack that I drummed a peepus in my sleep. Nice, nice. Okay, so the peepus were originally orange, which is weird. I guess they, I guess they changed it to blue because all of the projectiles you can shoot in Spamton Neo's fight are blue. Um, and they had like a ping pong set up. They'd like hit the bar, and you have to shoot them before they hit the bar, and. If they hit the bar, they'd explode, but they wouldn't just, like, hit you. You could actually shoot at the heads that come out of them. Cool. I've noticed, like, nearly everyone, I think, has mentioned a favorite part being with Spamton. I, I love how the entire team loves Spamton as well. Um, Fred, I got really attached to working with Noel through the Cyber City. Throughout the Cyber City, through the many mouse trials and tribulations. Some of those mouse puzzles were difficult to implement, but they made me all the stronger for having done them. There, there are some pretty complicated puzzles. Uh, so yeah, good on you, Fred. Gotta say rules. Ooh. I only did the bullets, but taking a lot of different thrash machine parts into account was fun. The little details for getting hit by an all-duck machine attack were mine too. The one and her monologue are a very close second. Oh, so Taxi worked on the Noel mon monologue at like at the end of the city? Cool. Yeah, but I gotta say rules. I, I love it. There's still, there's still a rules fan on the team. Uh, and then Queen. Also, <laughs> I love how this is the, I love how specifically this starts. Queen! Awesome woman. <laughs> I got to do a few cutscenes involving her, and I was also in charge of most of the sprites in the Giga Queen battle. Here's a couple mock-up gifts I made while working on those. Cool. Okay, again, you can see with the mock-ups, the non-outline sprites, more with solid colors. That's cool. So the original version of Punching Queen... The, I, I mean, a very desolate background right now. It's just a mock-up. Um, oh, and the the icons. Like, they had, like, icons in the corner instead of just the health bars. A lot different, too. We had, like, Queen laughing, and then we had the fun gang. I mean, I know, th I know the Thrash Machine built up like this is already a Power Rangers reference, but this specific image very much so looks like how they'd edit the, uh, like, the, like the Giga Size, you know, team up. In Power Rangers, when they're all connecting together, it like half the camera shot separated like this. That's what makes me think of um, early mock-up with 99999 frames of animation. Nice. Uh, and having fun testing out Queen's hand slam frames. Oh, so I guess this wasn't used in the final game either. But I guess she was originally gonna like slam the ground in front of you. Also, I noticed how Queen is like offset from the nose, cause cause yeah, cause she's in the center in the final game. I'm pretty sure a little more hunched down too. Um. Geeka Queen had a pointy nose in Toby's concept art, okay, but it ended up getting in the way too much in sprite form. I ultimately only included it in sprites which where it looked really cool or funny. Okay. And then free space. Okay, so that's the final part. Uh, Fred, my favorite glitch during development was that if you ate moss with Susie next to the dumpster, and then talked to the dumpster, you'd get a powerful item you weren't otherwise supposed to be able to get. It took us a surprisingly long time to figure out why. Moss is powerful. 
Uh, I actually heard about this before recording this video because uh, people figured out very quickly that the dumpster in the moss area is the one where you get thorn ring from from spamton so somehow there was a glitch that lets you get the thorn ring it somehow like changed the plot flags of the snow grave indicator or whatever and allowed you to get the thorn ring from the dumpster after eating the moss with susie which is really funny moss is powerful also a friend of mine kind of friend of mine but a uh, coder ocean bagel recently posted on twitter that they they figured out what happened and reversed the patch to make it happen which is really funny um, and then Gene, my favorite bug. Using pop-ups, click act to cause the enemy to create copies of themselves endlessly until they fake crash and get spared. I somehow introduced a bug that actually caused a pop-up to endlessly create sprites until the game actually crashed. Oh, that's really funny. Method acting. Other than that, all I'd like to say is that working on this team has been a dream. Everyone is super nice and talented. I can't wait for everyone to see what we have in store next. Heck yeah. Um, Chess, when I design... When I designed Birdie's Dark World form, I conceded that the level of detail might make it annoying for Temi to work from. It was jokingly suggested that he could transform into a more powerful form. I love how that's capitalized. Immediately after his reveal, so that the form could be much simpler to animate. So, so he'd appear with this like super high quality sprite, and then he'd be like, Alright, Lightner, it's time to take you down, and for this, I will reveal my ultimate form! And then he just loses some detail. <laughs> just becomes polygons. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, this is definitely more complicated than the game's final sprite, I'm pretty sure. I mean, that's that's his light road. I don't think he had the cape. I think the main thing is the cape that they got rid of. Headset. Two pockets. So, so this is like the simpler version. He'd have the same head, but then the shirt would be the same, but two pockets. The double pocket power. Did you know the sigil on Dark World Birdie's chest was supposed to be a pocket? Now you do. Huh. I mean, I guess that makes sense, because I think it's the same as his Light World. But that's kind of weird, because, like... Well, one, it looks like Papyrus' battle body a bit, so you'd think, oh, it's a similar symbol. But also, this isn't fabric, right? It's bulging out. Where would the... How would the pocket fit? Do you, like, sew the pocket onto the plastic or whatever... Whatever's making up his armor? Uh, instead of this, Tommy just simp... Uh... Toby. Temi just simplified the design a little bit, little and powered through the rest of it. Thanks, Power Tem. Yeah, don't forget Tem as well. We already had an interview with her on her own, but she's part of this development team. Give all of them love. I probably don't have to tell you this, but look forward to Chapter 3. It's my favorite one yet. That I'm excited to hear, because Toby's kind of downplayed Chapter 3 a bit. And, like, he's gone on record saying it's not going to have as much plot, it's probably not going to be, like, as story-oriented, it's just going to be fun, which, okay. And also, I did kind of agree, I, Spamton, I became obsessed with, and I hold him very high. To expect something better than Chapter 2 and all of its internet shenanigans and Queen and Spamton w might be expecting a bit too much from me. Like, I don't want to hold my expectations too high. I know it's going to be great, but I'm not sure better than Spamton. But hearing Chess, like, say it's their favorite chapter, it's her favorite chapter, makes me excited. I'm very excited to see what, what's done with it. Again, I'll curb my enthusiasm, but I'm very, I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, you can only care so much. We're getting chapter three and four next year. Let's go. <laughs> uh, but that, yeah, that's the interview. It's re really nice hearing from the perspective of the rest of the developers, especially Taxiderby, because I've been wondering where Tax, what, like, how Taxiderby's been doing on the development team, which is, re it's really cool to see they're doing all these things. But yeah, uh, we only got a little bit of the newsletter. Yeah, we're already at the conclusion. What the? How is it over already? This letter was too short! This has to be some sort of crime! You reach out to tear away the blanket of the culprit! But there was no one underneath! Instead, only the stench of dinosaur egg oatmeal hangs in the air. Ooh, spooky. Did you find what you were looking for after all? Oh, so did, did we get dinosaur egg oatmeal after all? Great, and I love I love Toby. Like, underneath the, the spooky ghost claw thing having disappeared. The end. Oh, and then we got Sans Pumpkin. I choose to believe Sans didn't, like, concede and put on a post costume. I, I choose to believe he just transformed into a pumpkin. Or how maybe it's just San It's probably just Sans' face carved in a pumpkin, isn't it? <laughs> that that'd probably make more sense. But yeah. So that's the entire newsletter. De pretty short. Definitely not as big as the other uh, newsletters. But also, it's a surprise newsletter that we none of us were expecting to get in between the normal issues and also we got an interview with the developers and a reveal that Deltarune chapter 3 and 4 are basically probably gonna release next year so yeah pretty big news and I'm super excited for that that's made me super hyped um 
Unfortunately, I guess that means we're not going to get as much development info, which makes sense. No spoilers and stuff uh, in the next few newsletters until then. But yeah, final year countdown. It's begun. Let's go. So, uh, I, I mean, I know this isn't coming out on Halloween. It's going to be coming out on Friday in a few days. But happy Halloween, everyone. Thanks for watching. I got to go edit this now. Or oh, I know I got to go to a Halloween party first in my gas and show off my gas costume. And then I got to come back and edit this. But I hope you guys all have an awesome time trick or treating, getting your candy, or if you're too old for that, handing out candy or showing off your costumes, whatever. Thank you all for watching. Take care. I'll see you next time. Happy Halloween.